Jeremiah chapter 34 While Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms and peoples in the empire he ruled, were fighting against Jerusalem and all its surrounding towns, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Go to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, This is what the Lord says. I am about to give this city into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he will burn it down. You will not escape from his grasp, but will surely be captured and given into his hands. You will see the king of Babylon with your own eyes, and he will speak with you face to face, and you will go to Babylon. Yet hear the Lord's promise to you, Zedekiah king of Judah. This is what the Lord says concerning you. You will not die by the sword. You will die peacefully. As people made a funeral fire in honor of your predecessors, the kings who ruled before you, so they will make a fire in your honor and lament, Alas, Master! I myself make this promise, declares the Lord. Then Jeremiah the prophet told all this to Zedekiah king of Judah in Jerusalem, while the army of the king of Babylon was fighting against Jerusalem and the other cities of Judah that were still holding out, Lachish and Azekah. These were the only fortified cities left in Judah. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord after king Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people in Jerusalem to proclaim freedom for the slaves. Everyone was to free their Hebrew slaves, both male and female. No one was to hold a fellow Hebrew in bondage. So all the officials and people who entered into this covenant agreed that they would free their male and female slaves and no longer hold them in bondage. They agreed and set them free. But afterwards they changed their minds and took back the slaves they had freed and enslaved them again. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I made a covenant with your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I said, Every seventh year, each of you must free any fellow Hebrews who have sold themselves to you. After they have served you for six years, you must let them go free. Your ancestors, however, did not listen to me or pay attention to me. Recently, you repented and did what is right in my sight. Each of you proclaimed freedom to your own people. You even made a covenant before me in the house that bears my name. But now you have turned round and profaned my name. Each of you has taken back the male and female slaves you had set free to go where they wished. You have forced them to become your slaves again. Therefore this is what the Lord says. You have not obeyed me. You have not proclaimed freedom to your own people. So I now proclaim freedom for you, declares the Lord. Freedom to fall by the sword, plague, and famine. I will make you abhorrent to all the kingdoms of the earth. Those who have violated my covenant and have not fulfilled the terms of the covenant they made before me, I will treat like the calf they cut in two and then walked between its pieces. The leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the court officials, the priests, and all the people of the land who walked between the pieces of the calf, I will deliver into the hands of their enemies who want to kill them. Their dead bodies will become food for the birds and the wild animals. I will deliver Zedekiah king of Judah and his officials into the hands of their enemies who want to kill them, to the army of the king of Babylon, which has withdrawn from you. I am going to give the order, declares the Lord, and I will bring them back to this city. They will fight against it, take it, and burn it down. And I will lay waste the towns of Judah, so that no one can live there. Jeremiah chapter 35 this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord during the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. Go to the Rechabite family and invite them to come to one of the side rooms of the house of the Lord and give them wine to drink. 
So I went to get Jeazaniah, son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brothers and all his sons, the whole family of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the room of the sons of Hanan, son of Igdaliah, the man of God. It was next to the room of the officials, which was over that of Maasiah, son of Shalom, the doorkeeper. Then I set bowls full of wine and some cups before the Rechabites, and said to them, Drink some wine. But they replied, We do not drink wine, because our forefather Jehonadab, son of Rechab, gave us this command. Neither you nor your descendants must ever drink wine. Also you must never build houses, sow seed, or plant vineyards. You must never have any of these things, but must always live in tents. Then you will live a long time in the land where you are nomads. We have obeyed everything our forefather Jehonadab, son of Rechab, commanded us. Neither we, nor our wives, nor our sons and daughters have ever drunk wine, or built houses to live in, or had vineyards, fields, or crops. We have lived in tents, and have fully obeyed everything our forefather Jehonadab commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded this land, we said, Come, we must go to Jerusalem to escape the Babylonian and Aramean armies. So we have remained in Jerusalem. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Go and tell the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, Will you not learn a lesson and obey my words, declares the Lord? Jehonadab, son of Rechab, ordered his descendants not to drink wine, and this command has been kept. To this day they do not drink wine, because they obey their forefathers' command. But I have spoken to you again and again, yet you have not obeyed me. Again and again I sent all my servants the prophets to you. They said, each of you must turn from your wicked ways and reform your actions. Do not follow other gods to serve them. Then you shall live in the land I have given to you and your ancestors. But you have not paid attention or listened to me. The descendants of Jehonadab, son of Rechab, have carried out the command their forefather gave them. But these people have not obeyed me. Therefore this is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Listen, I am going to bring on Judah and on everyone living in Jerusalem every disaster I pronounced against them. I spoke to them, but they did not listen. I called to them, but they did not answer. Then Jeremiah said to the family of the Rechabites, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You have obeyed the command of your forefather, Jehonadab, and have followed all his instructions, and have done everything he ordered. Therefore this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Jehonadab, son of Rechab, shall never fail to have a descendant to serve me. Jeremiah chapter 36 In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Take a scroll, and write on it all the words I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the other nations from the time I began speaking to you in the reign of Josiah till now. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about every disaster I plan to inflict on them, they will each turn from their wicked ways. Then I will forgive their wickedness and their sin. So Jeremiah called Baruch, son of Neriah. And while Jeremiah dictated all the words the Lord had spoken to him, Baruch wrote them on the scroll. Then Jeremiah told Baruch, I am restricted. I am not allowed to go to the Lord's temple. So you go to the house of the Lord on a day of fasting and read to the people from the scroll the words of the Lord that you wrote as I dictated. Read them to all the people of Judah who come in from their towns. Perhaps they will bring their petition before the Lord and will each turn from their wicked ways for the anger and wrath pronounced against this people by the Lord are great. Baruch, son of Neriah, did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do. At the Lord's temple, he read the words of the Lord from the scroll. 
In the ninth month of the fifth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, a time of fasting before the Lord was proclaimed for all the people in Jerusalem and those who had come from the towns of Judah. From the room of Gemariah, son of Shaphan the secretary, which was in the upper courtyard at the entrance of the new gate of the temple, Baruch read to all the people at the Lord's temple the words of Jeremiah from the scroll. When Micaiah, son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, heard all the words of the Lord from the scroll, he went down to the secretary's room in the royal palace, where all the officials were sitting. Elishima, the secretary, Deliah, son of Shemaiah, Elnathan, son of Akbor, Gamariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the other officials. After Micaiah told them everything he had heard Baruch read to the people from the scroll, all the officials sent Jehudai, son of Nethaniah, the son of Shalamiah, the son of Cushai, to say to Baruch, Bring the scroll from which you have read to the people and come. So Baruch, son of Neriah, went to them with the scroll in his hand. They said to him, Sit down, please, and read it to us. So Baruch read it to them. When they heard all these words, they looked at each other in fear and said to Baruch, We must report all these words to the king. Then they asked Baruch, Tell us, how did you come to write all this? Did Jeremiah dictate it? Yes, Baruch replied. He dictated all these words to me, and I wrote them in ink on the scroll. Then the officials said to Baruch, You and Jeremiah, go and hide. Don't let anyone know where you are. After they put the scroll in the room of Elishema, the secretary, they went to the king in the courtyard and reported everything to him. The king sent Jehudai to get the scroll, and Jehudai brought it from the room of Elishema, the secretary, and read it to the king and all the officials standing beside him. It was the ninth month, and the king was sitting in the winter apartment, with a fire burning in the brazier in front of him. Whenever Jehudai had read three or four columns of the scroll, the king cut them off with a scribe's knife and threw them into the brazier, until the entire scroll was burned in the fire. The king and all his attendants who heard all these words showed no fear, nor did they tear their clothes. Even though Elnathan, Deliah, and Gemariah urged the king not to burn the scroll, he would not listen to them. Instead, the king commanded Jeramiel, the son of the king, Sariah, son of Azriel, and Shelemiah, son of Abdiel, to arrest Baruch the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord had hidden them. After the king burned the scroll containing the words that Baruch had written at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Take another scroll, and write on it all the words that were on the first scroll, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, burned up. Also, tell Jehoiakim, king of Judah, this is what the Lord says. You burned that scroll and said, Why did you write on it? that the king of Babylon would certainly come and destroy this land, and wipe from it both man and beast. Therefore this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim king of Judah. He will have no one to sit on the throne of David. His body will be thrown out and exposed to the heat by day and the frost by night. I will punish him and his children and his attendants for their wickedness. I will bring on them and those living in Jerusalem and the people of Judah every disaster I pronounced against them, because they have not listened. So Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to the scribe Baruch, son of Neriah. And as Jeremiah dictated, Baruch wrote on it all the words of the scroll that Jehoiakim king of Judah had burned in the fire, and many similar words were added to them. Psalm 98 Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. 
Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound, and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Proverbs chapter 16 To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, He causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The lips of a king speaks as an oracle, and his mouth does not betray justice. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. All the weights in the bag are of his making. Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established through righteousness. Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. When a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like a rain cloud in spring. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. The highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. The wise in heart are called discerning, and gracious words promote instruction. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, and their lips promote instruction. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and healing to the bones. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of laborers works for them, their hunger drives them on. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. A violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever purses their lips is bent on evil. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord.